Welcome to the BiCast, podcasting for the BiCast community. Um, we are here today with Mick Collins. Say hi, Mick. Hi, guys. And I'm Elizabeth Meacham. And today we have with us Heather Jacks, who is the author of Sister Stories, which is this beautiful pictorial book that she'll be giving away a copy of to one lucky person in the contiguous 48. Um, and we're going to introduce us to the person sitting next to you, Heather. This is my, my love. This is Sister Mary Media. And Mary <laughs> Media, and I'm just going to tell you, um, when I first was starting this book, I had to go to the Sisters General Meeting and present the idea. And Mary was actually the first one who signed up. So it feels like, <laughs> it just feels full circle to me. Um, first victim. <laughs> first victim. She is a veteran nun. I like that word, a veteran. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she's also the creator of Playfair, which is the first safe sex pamphlet, essentially, um, written for and uh, by the gay community during the um, height of pre, the AIDS epidemic. Pre AIDS epidemic, yeah. And she, oh, what, what year was that? It was 1982. Oh, wow. That is pre AIDS epidemic. Yeah. yeah. That's. That's yeah, it time. wasn't called AIDS yet. It was called gay. Re In fact, we refer to it as a gay. There's a gay cancer. Yeah. Going around, and um, it it hadn't even gotten the name GRID yet, gay related immune deficiency. Um, yeah. So, but there was a lot of other STDs going around the community at the time, and that's what we we thought we were dealing with, and it turns out that, you know, we were just be, you know, on the beginning of the, of a very tragic arc um, for that we have we've all been through. You know, I, and I was around then, and Mick, I'm sure you were around then too. You're about my age, and that was even before they started putting information in the schools in about 1984, 85. So that was even before then, and that was kind of uh, yeah. when everybody started becoming more aware of it. And then the 90s, you remember all that. Um, but it's so hard to remember what it was like until you go and look at some something from that time, and you think, "Yeah, that was a huge concern." It, um, and uh, especially for uh, bisexual men, were getting blamed for the whole thing, so it was a right. very bad thing for our community. Um, and uh, so, yeah, but I, I forget that everybody forgets when you you know things are doing better. You forget that how how bad right. they really got. Yes. So. Um, well, we thought we were, as I said, we thought we were dealing with, you know, an epidemic of STDs, you know, uh, gonorrhea, the clap, and um, things like that. Of course, one of the STDs that we have in that pamphlet is guilt, and mm -hmm. um, so we were trying, you know, we were trying to counteract um, that as much as um, any of the physiological diseases that were rampant uh, at the time when it was a period of sexual experimentation and people were just coming out of you know the repressed era that had um, preceded yeah and going straight into the Reagan era yeah <laughs> yes, exactly. there was a bit of up and down and it, I remember it, that there was a bit of blowback from that was. from conservative people I mean and, what what makes to be proud about the that that particular thing and uh, um, uh, the, the project of ours, the Playfair pamphlet, is the title. For example, at the time, the only information that was being uh, presented to that people had access to was uh, coming from health departments or um, medical professionals, and it and it came with a kind of a censorious language you shouldn't yeah. be doing this and and if you you know if you would stop behaving this way then you wouldn't get all these diseases and things like that we knew that that wasn't realistic we knew that that's you're not going to have people stop having sex so mm -hmm. our whole message was when you're doing it take care of each other you yeah. know make sure that you make sure that you're disease free before you go back out to play so that's why we call it play fair that was our yeah. message that's a good message too and it's it kind was, of recognized I now it's kind of recognized now as an early um community response to a health crisis yeah and it was one of the better ones it um we I think I may her. have run into your pamphlet somewhere along over yeah. the years but uh I do remember the stuff that they they 
gave us all this AIDS literature in school, and it was very much the bottom line was don't have sex. Well, tell a bunch yeah. of teenagers that, and that's the first thing we're going to do. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so, and it, of course, they're going to have sex. So, right. um, do it safely. yeah, yeah. Um, well, what else were we going to say about you before we started accepting questions yeah. from the gallery? Uh, Let's see. Well, I could give you a little bit of history of the sisters. We started in 1979. Okay, perfect. I, I was two at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I was two. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. A, yeah. She was a squirt in her bum Right, bum. just a squirt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, no, so we started in 1979. We were, we were a group of gay men who, in San Francisco, the... Uh, what was going on at the time, I felt, was kind of a fetishization of masculinity. It was kind of the whole, uh, the whole way you were supposed to be was like it was the Castro clone. It was, it was the Castro clone. It was I exactly the photo on my ceiling. Right, <laughs> capitalism. So. Yeah, it's at the root of all evil. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what Jesus said. It brought me to you. <laughs> he died, yes. Okay, so the fetishization of masculinity has had some good <laughs> some good benefits. So we um we were a group of gay men who didn't really feel that we fit into that. That we felt that we were we wanted to honor like the more feminine aspects of ourselves. Not, you know, and to how do we give expression to that so we um came together we had dance classes together one of the founding sisters um had a dance company and had we had these dance classes so once we started bonding around that we said well how do we take this message out into the street and offer an alternative way of celebrating the gay experience the queer experience and so some nuns had two of the guys or three of the guys had gone out dressed as nuns uh, um, a few months before and several times since. And they had gotten fabulous reactions from people. You know, it's a very dramatic image on the street that kind of challenges the everyday uh, situation of what's going on in the streets to see men dressed as nuns. So he said well why don't we we could start a group of nuns and and so that's what we did the city of san francisco had a program at the time called the costume bank where they would fund costumes for nonprofit theater companies mm -hmm. so since one of our founders had a nonprofit theater company the city of san francisco basically for free made the habits for us so you've got to love a city that provides you with drag right yeah no kidding oh yeah yeah <laughs> So that's how we that's how we started. We and then the whole idea of being a group of nuns just took over. It's like, what do we do? You know, what could we do? What could you do? And our imaginations got carried away. And forty years later, here we find ourselves. Here we are. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, how many about there? How many are there? Uh, there's about thirty-five active nuns and about another thirty-five passive nuns. Isn't that symmetrical? Um, <laughs> so, um, and uh, there's maybe a hundred nuns on our roster, like people who've been active nuns in the sisters in San Francisco. In but, San we have, Francisco. but we have, but we have houses of sisters in about sixty cities in the United States, and in twelve, oh, wow, other nice. and in twelve other countries. So, a lot of them will be descending here in a few weeks for to celebrate our 40th anniversary yeah you're having a reunion aren't you yeah kind of we I call it that a, somewhere we call it a conclave oh yes absolutely oh yeah <laughs> so this book that i've created yes. i'm just going to say it really right. quick um is essentially uh it includes the founders the remaining founders and some of our veterans um and it's basically it's interviews and photos and it's a coffee table book and it's really amazing it's taken three years to make it and the next thing i'm doing and because you brought up the other sister houses i'm doing that whistle stop tour so i'm yeah. going across the country for four months on a train and i'm visiting mm -hmm. all these sister houses and we're hosting these great um interactive forums and i'm going to be interviewing and photographing sisters along the way and the next book sister stories 
from the road. I don't know if that's what I'll call right. it, but it'll be the second edition. And it'll be all across the United States, Nashville, Memphis, uh, New Orleans, uh, Cleveland, Ohio. A ton of really places I've never been, so I'm excited. So that's that's, that's an amazing I'm adventure right there. there. Oh, there goes my mess. Hold on. Did you guys that see happens. my mess? I was trying to hide it with the cool. Oh no. <laughs> you know, that's what happens when you go live. You go nobody needs to see my house. The truth will out when the sisters are around. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> hey there. That's my my craftiness behind me and it got out of control. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Between that and uh, yeah, so, hey, let's. I mean, uh, the, the great thing is that in all of those forty years, there has never been a sister, a picture book of the sisters, which Heather had the brilliant idea of coming up with, and we, you know, it's like people have written articles about us, and there's thousands of millions of photos of us. People love to have their picture taken when we're out on the street and things yeah, like that. But um, I mean, you're all uh, up, nobody has you? ever put together the you know really good great photos of the sisters along with our story and what you know what we're about and so we're all really looking forward to the publication ah! in a couple of weeks no pressure yeah, right. yeah yeah i think that one of the things that i personally am i am i identify very much as a you know a straight girl cisgender straight girl um so it has very much that perspective it's very mainstream um, we had done one of the fundraising events I had done a couple of years ago, and I know you were there, um, was uh, what I called Sister Speaks. And um, it kind of speaks to what you guys were talking about earlier as well. Um, what, uh, one of the sisters who was speaking at that night, she says, you know, you're going to have your, your, because all of them are sold out. And she's like, it's going to be old gay men. And I was like, really? because I don't really know a lot of old gay men. I mean, I know, you know, a few. Um, it was not. It was really all young people of color. Do you remember uh -huh. that? Yeah. And it was young people who did not know who Jose Saria was. Were you there when we did the singing? Yes. That was so amazing. And um, it was just, so that is a reason this book is really important. It is somewhat, um, I'm going to be honest, I think it's a little mainstream. I think it's a lot of information that's going to be digestible, hopefully, to a lot of people. But it's, again, a resource, not just for people like me who came from, a fundamentalist church uh -huh. who came from protesting the sisters uh -huh. um, <laughs> to young people, queer people who don't know their history and they don't have any mentors or icons, you know, uh, really to look to. So I'm hoping that it, that's kind of my hope for it. Uh -huh. You know, I, I thought I hope as young people, I was really amazed, you know, like what you were talking about. These are the pioneers who worked through that AIDS um, epidemic. I lived here in San Francisco in the mid eighties and People are just, they just don't know about that. Right. Um, at, the, at what cost, you know, they have the freedoms that we have today. Um, so I'm really hoping that it's a resource and I hope that people get inspired and I hope people are interested. I hope young people are, you know, inspired. And um, that's my hope. And educated, yeah. I guess. Right. Yeah. Well, let's go uh, real quickly. Can we go into, Heather, a little more into your background just briefly and then we'll start taking questions. Okay. Um, very quickly, I was uh, raised on Indian land until I was 15 in the southeastern part of Oregon. I left home at the age of 15. I went to Australia, lived in the outback for another year, um, came back, really, really wanted to find a home, a place, friends, um, ended up in a fundamentalist church, um, did that for a while, and uh, then was thrown out of the fundamentalist church um, and came to San Francisco. Uh, I have a master's degree. Um, and. Uh, my first time meeting the sisters was actually in the 80s here in San Francisco. And my second time was on the opposite side of a picket line at Capitol Christian Center. Mm -hmm. in 1992 at Easter. Um, on the opposite side of oh, the sisters. Really? Uh, you were protesting. I was protesting you. Yeah. <laughs> How did that protest work out for you, Heather? Yeah. <laughs> so it's really cool to be here now. And, and people often ask me how I feel about um, having come from a fundamentalist church to this. Um, I think that we're always here to have uh, to learn lessons and I, I am very grateful to the fundamentalist church for having taught me some of the most difficult lessons that I had to learn on this planet. And, um, you know, I, I'm not sure. I think I learned them in a hard way and I'm mm -hmm. really, really just happy, you know, that I learned them mm -hmm. pretty much at a younger age, you know, so that's kind of my, and I'm in San Francisco. Uh, I work at Starbucks coffee. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> So there's go that. visit her. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just uh, say, I, I mentioned earlier that we were a bunch of gay men who 
at, in the 70s who were uh, started the sisters. But it, the membership has expanded um, completely turned around since then. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we have all kinds of um, we've had cisgender women in the order. We have bisexuals. We have by you know men, women, um, queers, um, and you know a, a fair a fair percentage of gay men still. But um, we have a lot of women in the order now, and um, so we we truly are nuns. I would say. Yeah, and that's the point that, that I should make. We 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 don't play nuns. You yeah, know? yeah. We 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 do the work that nuns do. You yeah. know, they yeah. raise money for the poor. We raise money for the poor. Mm -hmm. They comfort the afflicted. We comfort the afflicted. They educate. We educate. They take a vow of chastity. We raise money for the poor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I remember vaguely because I grew up Catholic. I remember vaguely you all being in the news for something. And wondering if this, as a very, we're talking elementary age Catholic, what this was all about. But I don't really, there may have been a point where the Catholic Church was just very much offended, but I don't remember that specifically anymore. They sort of are. They still yeah. are. Even they still, still are. I mean, yeah. if you're you doing good work, it, there's also Buddhist nuns, right? I mean, right. they don't own the, the term. Right. But you know who, you know who gets us is nuns yeah. catholic nuns yeah they understand like if they take the time to talk to us and get to mm -hmm. and, and, and really sort of pay attention to what we're doing like get beyond the 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 image they um they understand that our behavior in the world kind of makes us defines who we are as people and they yeah. get that it's yeah. the, the it's the kind of hypocritical um patriarchal hierarchy of the church that doesn't, oh, they like, don't, that doesn't like anything those guys yes, yes. <laughs> yes. exactly yes. thank you <laughs> you yes. know I'm, I'm, yeah no, I'll, yeah. i won't say anymore <laughs> we all know who i'm talking about hey let's uh, go ahead and take a question anybody out there got a question i'll give you a couple seconds to post it here i see amy this is do you remember the lady okay here we go amy has one uh she says, oh, wow, that's quite a journey from protesting to celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, that should have been a right. journey from protesting yeah. to celebrating. Oh, my God, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyone else have a comment or a question out there? Hello. I was just going to say, our, um, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, if you haven't been in a fundamentalist church, and, and I'm just going to give you a quick little, like, nutshell of it. Um, once you've risen to a certain level, you get a mission. And some people's missions, it was not my mission, was to come to San Francisco and proselytize to the gay people here. My mission was in what's called the Apologetics Resource Center because I have a, a master's degree in rhetoric and communication. So what that meant was that when people, and I'm, I'm speaking strictly from, the, from my mission, okay? Mm -hmm. um, people um, encountered uh, erroneous belief structures that were erroneous to God's true way. They would come to me and I would correct them. That was like, uh -huh. and I would uh -huh. explain to them the error of the ways um, so that they could then go back out and proselytize and witness further. And so that was what it was. And um, so uh, it was actually a Mormon who <laughs> really got me questioned it. Uh, this, uh, I worked for this wonderful person um, at music, uh, music circus in Sacramento and I loved him. Unfortunately, he was Mormon, and that is very uh, adverse, yes, adverse, adverse to fundamentalism. And um, that was actually the beginning of my downfall. <laughs> and then Sister Vish didn't help. Let me tell you that right now. Sister, yeah. What did you call her? Sister what? Can you hear me? Sister Vish is power hungry bitch. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> She's a founder, and she She's is a handful. <laughs> so she, uh, we have four, four founders. Who are called the founders? We call them the Fab Four: um, the Sister uh, Vicious Power Hungry Bitch, Sister Missionary Position, Reverend Mother the Abbess, who is not who is a mother. She was not like an authority figure, and Sister Hysterectoria. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That's awesome. I'm getting a note that my. Now uh, you just cut out there, Elizabeth. 
Oh, good, Nick. I'm glad you, Nick, you, you can't hear her either. I thought it was just me. Yeah. So have you had encounters with the nuns in the past? Uh, I mean, have you, either of you? Like, uh, Nick, uh, I haven't. Um, unfortunately, I was raised in Idaho, which is about as far away as you can get from culture outside of the solar system. I don't think we have a house in Idaho. No, oh, yeah? I've been all over, but uh, it was military basis. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, we got you. Um, I wish we had somebody captioning this. So if, uh, if we were having problems, it wouldn't be problems, but I'm hoping they can hear me now. Um, anyway, yeah, we were on military bases. Um, the closest I got to San Francisco was San Diego on MCRD, which is my dad's last duty station. And then we moved up to Seattle after that, way out east of Seattle. And I wasn't back in Seattle proper till I was in college and, and then as an adult, but I don't, um, I remember the sisters, but only from television, not from, or from news reports, not from uh -huh. actual encounters, which mm -hmm. I wish I had. Uh, I feel like I've missed out now. <laughs> right. Well, too. it's always interesting for me to encounter like w a sister uh, who has joined the order because when she was a little kid, she saw the nuns out on the street and she didn't know why she rea was reacting to them, but she knew that that had something to do with their life. And she, one day she wanted to be uh, connected to this, to this group. And so we've had a couple of nuns who are, who are like that, and they always remind me of how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, right? Hey, can everybody hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got I you. Yep. I think I figured out the right right button to push, so I'm hoping the audience can hear me now. Pushing um, buttons, yes. yeah. <laughs> and Lynette, I know you're there. Let me know if you can hear me. It may take a, oh. a couple yep. seconds delay. Well, hey, I hope uh, I can. so Heather, what was your initial inspiration to do this book? What was the impetus? Um, well, I work at I work at Starbucks. I've worked on and off for Starbucks for 23 years. So that's a long, yeah, woo, <laughs> Starbucks <laughs> lifer. Yeah, I, I am, and um, and uh, one of the baristas there, I, I used to have these, uh, I used to make record bags, these really cool uh, record bags, uh, purses out of oh, yes. old records, they're they very, cool. very cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I was working there, this barista said to me, it's this big, big person, said, oh, you know, you do this, you know, would you be interested in designing for me for Project Nunway? And I said, I'm not a designer, I don't know what Project Nunway is, and I don't think so. <laughs> and he said, oh, no. So he lied to me. He said, oh, it's super easy. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, all right. You know, you seem cool. And then he revealed himself as a sister. So he is sister Agnes Day after tomorrow, and, uh, which I didn't know. Yeah. So I thought, well, okay. So I committed myself. I'm a Virgo. So when I make a commitment, I stick with it. I came home. I Googled Nunway. And all that L.A. Nunway stuff came uh, up. <laughs> oh, my God. It is off the hook. And I was, like, mortified. Um, but anyway, so I designed a, an outfit for Project Nunway. Project Nunway is awesome. They, um, it's essentially a, um, fashion show. it's a fashion show and Fundraiser. you raise money. Yeah. yeah. And so I designed a, a beautiful, amazing outfit that should have won and we came in second, whatever. Um, not the point. Fits. And it was out of, Fits. it was, yeah, it was out of, um, tarot cards and burnt Bible pages. Oh, wow. So you have like a hundred dollar budget. So I'd go down and get these Bibles out of, you know, the bar station and go home and make roses. Hotel room. Yeah, I would, dude. It was so bad. <laughs> and I got all these tarot cards. I made this amazing outfit. It had like this 20 foot long train. It was incredible. Um, raised a ton of money um, that night. Uh, we did a silent auction, raised, I think, seven or 9,000 in that silent auction alone. Mm. So I thought, wow, and that doesn't count ticket sales and alcohol and all that. That was just a silent auction, which I was overseeing. And I thought, well, you know, I want to see where this money goes. Like it goes to their grants, you know, and I don't know what that is. And I want to see what it is. So I went to Oasis. They, uh, that was where the grant giving was that year. Um, Oasis is amazing, like very gay cabaret, awesome club run by Hetlina. Um, and they gave out like $12,000 that night to all these like super fringy organizations and um, prison uh, reentry programs. Um, uh, historical Needle preservation. Exchange, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, tons of things that Healthcare were not. For sex workers. Yeah, that, yeah, not all exclusively LGBTQ. And mm -hmm. I was like, wow, these are people who are really doing serious work in the community at large. It's not limited. And um, so I was sold. And then that was about about five years ago. Mm -hmm. That was when Zsa, Zsa did it. And I don't remember mm -hmm. if it was five years ago. And I've been doing Nunway ever since. Um, working with it. I love it. Um. Uh, and I just really, I just think it's super fun. But that was really it. I, I was so sold when I realized these people really are doing the work 
they are really doing the work. And it's, like I say, not limited to just LGBTQ, it's to all kinds of random things that could never get funded any other way except without the sisters. I mean, except mm-hmm. for the sisters, I should right. say. Mm-hmm. Um, because they're not, these are like little fringe orders. And one organization you all funded that year made me very special is, um, is um, Hate Street. I love the Hate Ashbury. I love Hate Street. There is a um, really cool organization there um, that they basically, it's for uh, kids who are homeless. A lot of kids come from across the country to Hate Street for the experience. And then they get to Hate Street and just things, you know, don't work out. And um, they fall through the cracks because they, um, you know, they're minors. Right. And it's an organization that specifically helps minors. Um, in in really really miraculous ways and it keeps it real anonymous and we all helped her help that organization that year and i was really just like Mm -hmm. because i do a lot of volunteer with the hate street uh refuge there so that's how i got started um well basically agnes lied to me and said it was going to be easy (laughs) (laughs) do what it takes that's a good it was hilarious. I had done, okay, I love my outfit, but again, I'm not a designer. So I was using like bungee cords to hold this skirt up. <laughs> so she's sitting there drinking this big ass Slurpee. <laughs> and then she says to me, Heather, I have to go to the bathroom. Now the costume is way too big for her to fit in the bathroom. And I'm like, okay. She goes, yeah, I need to go now. And I'm like, how does this, how does <laughs> yeah. this affect me? Yes. And she goes, well, you need to get a bottle. And I'm like, oh, no, no, you need <laughs> no. to stop drinking that Slurpee <laughs> yeah. right now. That Slurpee's got to go. <laughs> I was like mortified. Like, text Fred, text Fred. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But, yeah. It was very close and personal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's, that's very personal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you're going to edit this or if I should have. If I should no, nobody's more. nothing's being edited. Right? This is live, Heather. Oh, yeah. I don't oh, censor yeah. well. Yeah, <laughs> no, this is fine. You're not, you're not, you said it. It's out there. It's out uh, there now. Yep, it's Let's live. So, it out. Yeah. Um, let's see if we can get somebody to ask us a question. We've got Amy and. Uh, is is my is that my is friend Amy from Oregon? Is she coming in from Oregon by chance? No, this is Amy Mitchell from New York. Oh, hello. Well, I don't know you, Amy, but hi. Amy <laughs> Leibowitz Mitchell. I have a friend in Oregon named Amy. <laughs> and then we have somebody. Named, uh, we have Nutty. Nutty Nutchta. Just Nutty. I know your first name, but I have never pronounced your last name. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like a sister name, doesn't yeah. it? Nutty yeah. 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 She, I think Nutty's been on the bicast before. Yeah, she's um I think so. She worked the back end. Uh uh she set it up, I think, <laughs> pretty much. Right now. <laughs> and there was Becca was here. We had a bunch of people, old veterans here. Um yeah. let's see yeah. uh Charles Hossel. You see him? Oh. That's Agnes. <laughs> That's Agnes. That's Hi, my Agnes. Hi Agnes. Hi Charles. Hi Charles. Hi Charles. <laughs> oh, I'm way behind. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nutty says, totally not shocked that actual nuns were supported. So, uh, so of the, are, so are rad liberals. Others, maybe not. Yes. Yeah. It's true. I mean, I, I don't know if you remember, uh, in San Francisco, it was pouring rain the day that the uh, Women's March following Trump's inauguration, the first Women's March. Mm-hmm. And, uh-huh. I remember being, you know, a, a whole bunch of sisters were at the, uh, were at, at the march where it was, we were all hanging around waiting for the march to start, and this, and a woman came over to me, and said, "Oh, the sisters are here. Th- uh, th- thank you so much, sisters, for being here. Now it feels real." And I, I thought to myself. Wow, she's looking at a nun, a man dressed as a nun in white face, and she's saying, now it feels real, you know? And, yeah. that's, and I love that, that people get that by us doing this, uh, presenting as we do, that we somehow pre- pre- present an opportunity for the real to take place, you know, for people, people to let down their guard, for people to, pre- you know, play along and to not be uh, the mask that they carry every day. It's like, it really does give people permission by us taking the permission to be whoever we want to be. It gives them the permission to do so as well. Mm -hmm. So that's part of our street ministry is just being there and giving people permission to uh, let, get rid of the guilt and embrace joy. That's our mission. Be who the, yeah. in, a, in a nutshell, promulgate uni- universal joy and expiate stigmatic guilt. That's our holy card. Yeah, it was That's an important message. 
Yeah. yeah. We're doing the photo shoots and we're going around the city, um, you know, doing the photo shoots. And um, yeah, every single time without fail, people like would just dash up and like, you know, you know, ask for a blessing and the sisters always carry glitter or their magical dust, whatever. And, you know, and it was, there's <laughs> always these amazing, and I, I really, I got some good candid photos of that. I, I, one of my yeah. favorites is Mary Tim. I think you saw that. Oh, yes. That was gorgeous. Really? Um, yeah, there's some gorgeous photos that um, are going to be in the book as well, obviously, some of them. I had 6,000 photos of which 106 are in the book. So you do the math. It's not very many made the book, but mm -hmm. 6,000 is a lot. But um, yeah, just really, it was super powerful. It just really, um, yeah, it just validates. Like every time I go out, I'd be like, oh, this is why I'm doing this. I want this message. I want this feeling and this experience mm -hmm. to be out there beyond our pink bubble of San Francisco. I love uh -huh. San Francisco, but San Francisco is a very protected and kind of a pink bubble. Uh -huh. And um, so I think it's going to be different when I go to Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be a different experience, you know. But, you know, it turns out that Portland now ha has out LGBT San Francisco. So Portland is now the <laughs> mecca for all things LGBTQ. Just, I don't know uh -huh. by what margin, but you guys are going to have to <laughs> get on that. Okay. Um, Lynette asks, what do you have to do to become a sister? Okay, well, in the beginning, of course, all it took was some sharp elbows, but um, uh, the first thing you have, you need is a calling. We, we do take vows. We take vows to the sisterhood. So we're essentially marrying the group. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first thing is to know that, is to really have a clear idea that this this kind of ministry, this way of uh, contributing out in the world is for you. And mm -hmm. then you start hanging out at some events with the sisters. That's when, that's the aspirant stage. And then um, after a while of doing that, then you actually formally um, uh, commit to uh, a, the process and um, you become a postulant. So then you're known as a, not, as a postulant. You're not allowed to wear uh, what you, makeup, essentially, in that stage. And then you become a novice where you can wear a white face, but not for the whole, not for the whole face. And then you finally get to the point of being what we call a fully professed sister, um, which is um, where you can... You do what you want to do, except <laughs> as long as you are serving the community and serving the order and not bringing dishonor to either. So it's about a two-year process now. And in that process, you have to do a bunch of things like contribute to a, a lot of events um, and uh, have a novice project like where you produce an event um, of some of some consequence that either benefits the community or benefits the order in some way. You have to mm -hmm. put in a bunch of hours in the our archives, so you we get the work of the archives done using like slave labor, and and we also uh, the 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 uh, new person is learning the history of, of the group, so. That's basically the process. It's like a, a two-year process of the order checking you out and you checking out the order. Now, what um, are some of the vows, if you could talk about those, or are those secret vows? <laughs> They're not so secret, are they? <laughs> not so secret. Well, you, you, you vow to, uh, to um, contribute to the community. You vow to be faithful to the sisters. You vow to... I don't remember all of them. It's been like only 40 years since I took my <laughs> vows. But uh, the final vow, here's the, here's the, the most important the, the final vow that you take is to not take myself too seriously. So it's like you're doing all of this work, but we all recognize that we're here because uh, life is short and we have, um, and we have to enjoy it for ourselves and for each other. And you mentioned people join XB8 
stigmatic guilt. Yeah, that's the mission. Spread universal joy, expiate stigmatic guilt. So, and you mentioned before, you don't have to be a gay man. You can be bisexual. You can be male or female Absolutely. or non-binary or... We don't even ask. I mean, that's not even a question. That's not part of, I mean, people may volunteer information like that, but basically, I don't remember anybody ever volunteering like that, mm -hmm. their, that kind of information about themselves when they were introducing themselves to the group to begin the process. It's really about having that calling, that, that this is how you want to do it. Um, I'm a saint with a San Francisco sister, and that mm -hmm. is the perfect perfect match for me because I get to do the things I love which is the fundraising and hanging out with the sisters but it, I don't have that yeah. calling to do what the present and do the type of work that they're doing um I love the book again and, and it's not to plug it but we have a wonder uh, there's females there's a trans person in the book there's a gay man there's a young person so I was really trying to get some diversity Old in a people. real yeah. <laughs> veteran, <She> was... <laughs> veteran. Um, I really want to get diversity because that's one of the myths that people have about the sisters is that you have to be a gay man and it's actually not true but a lot of people don't know that so I really wanted to be able to um, show that and just show uh, some diversity and I and so uh, different ethnicities different ways of um, identifying um, yeah and I really like it. and yeah. by female I right. you know, mm -hmm. female, and I'm so yeah and so if, it really comes down I think again to that calling is this something that you is this how you want to you know, are you, it's a calling. I don't have it. Mm -hmm. I love you, mm -hmm. but I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love our saints. We have, we say people who do good works for the order and people who do good works out in the world. So recently we sainted uh, Stormy Daniels when she was out here performing and she was just delighted to become a saint in the sisters. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, do you get I a think, lot of reaction about negative reaction? Not about being a sister, but... I have very anxiety filled children. It's not my fault. I, I, I was a good mom, okay? <laughs> I know, that's no. always that judgment. Right. But they get kind of, they've always been strange around costumes. And I'm wondering if you've ever run into that. With Everybody, children, you mean? With or? children or adults. It's, it's, this comes no, from my no. husband's side, okay? Well, not everybody like this, especially like now we're kind of almost a fixture in San Francisco. So mm -hmm. People know who we are okay um, so they're used to you so it's like oh there there's the sisters either yay there's the sisters or there they are again <laughs> um so uh but um in the early days people didn't know who we were and it and for some people didn't like it the people who want who felt like oh being gay we just all we want to do is fit in yeah yeah you know? We're just like everybody else, and here yeah. you are, ruining it for everyone. So we took that as our slogan, ruining it for everyone. And, yeah. Uh, well, um, I mean, more like people who are afraid of clowns or who are afraid of costumes or uh, there are, this is a legitimate fear, evidently, or, or costume characters or people who I don't cover their face. I haven't personally encountered people like that, but of course Good. they may have <laughs> turned and run before yeah. I got to them. Okay. Um, I had an issue with my daughter in uh, the Snoopy character of all things, and she was afraid of that thing. But evidently, I found out later that this is actually a legitimate thing that some people um, can't deal with hidden faces, of either makeup or costume. And uh -huh. she's definitely one of them. Uh -huh. So I've learned not to push it. But I think you're beautiful. She probably Thank does you. too. She just doesn't know how to process, you know, <laughs> kids. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting for me because I'm on Instagram and I have a, a pretty heavy following there. Um, but I, all, I have a lot of, you know, sisters, drag nuns, uh, drag queens. So it's interesting. Instagram is like, in my opinion, like the more positive um, social mm -hmm. media you don't get. But I do get comments where they're like, oh my gosh, if I saw that thing on the road, I would run. Yeah. And I do get those. Uh -huh. And it's not even met in an unloving way. It right. is Instagram. It's, it is right. the most nicest social media. But it's, yeah. I have a lot of conversations on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But I do get them. And again, because Instagram is very international. Yeah. And we're getting out of San Francisco where people are really very, after 40 years, you know, they expect the sisters to come and validate events like oh, the sisters are here and it's, it's like my event hasn't validated the sisters came um 
So I think, again, it's going to be very interesting going out into uh, other parts of this country where they're like, I do think that people who are in Nashville and Memphis and uh, well, Huntsville and now Birmingham, um, the fact that they are doing this now is mm -hmm. a political statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that it's essentially important to go support that. And it's really important in our political climate right now to have these conversations and to to just because I'm just a little crazy. I just think that humans are humans and like let live and let it be. You know, I'm just like, yeah, you know, everyone needs to have human rights. So it's really not about I mean, it is about LGBT rights at the core, but it's really I'm a female. It's about human rights. It's mm -hmm. about human rights. And I think that's really the larger thing that's at stake right now. So I'm really excited to go out and do that um, and see how it is in other places where you have literally like in um, the Rocket City Sisters, there are two. They, you know, there's two of them. Mm -hmm. And to see how that it feels, how that experience right. is, it's going to be very different than here. And I'm excited. I can't wait to hear your reports. From well, you'll see them yeah. every day yeah. on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody already wrote to me on Instagram, like, oh, be very careful on Greyhound. And I'm like, I will, thank you. You'll be fine. Yeah. I'm not even worried. I'm so not worried. I, you're not alone anyway. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not even. <laughs> trying I'm to alone, and I, I like that better because I, yeah. I just yeah. like my own company. The I did best. Amtrak how from. Do you, how do you find in the, in the in the bi community? Like, do you find that there's um, an, an acceptance of trans kind of presentation? Like people. Oh, absolutely. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of us, and a lot of trans people are bi. Um, uh, there's a lot of, or non-binary. Um, I just learned the gender non-conforming word, and that fits me, because I, I'm a woman, but I don't necessarily fit that stereotype yeah. uh, very well sometimes when I'm playing with chainsaws. Um, so, uh, and I love that, or my motorcycle. Exactly, yeah. So, um, there's a, there's a, I, I love the bike community for its diversity. And, and actually, that's what I loved about the Catholic Church, so um, is, is the diversity. And I, seeing that mirrored in the sisters, it's, it's pretty cool. And I do miss that in church uh, because now I go to a Protestant church, and it's very segregated, the Protestant churches are, uh, which is weird to me. And I know there's history that I don't know about it, but um, uh, Coming from that back room where every background where everything was so diverse, the bisexual community has been just so comfortable for me to be in because it's so diverse. Um, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, especially with trans people, it's it's been great. How about you, Mick? Yeah, it's. Yeah, I find it's very very diverse. Um, I think more so than people realize. And the fact that sometimes you get people coming down and saying, oh, no, you know, we're very closed and, you know, uh, kind of anti-trans and all that. I, I, it flabbergasted me the first time I heard it because I had never, ever seen it like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and it's weird because it seems like, I don't know, maybe as a bisexual male, you know, I have my best friend, she called me a unicorn because, you know, you never see us anywhere, you know, we're just, we're nowhere. So um, the fact that it seems like we're kind of hidden, but in plain sight too, is kind of weird, um, mm -hmm. you know, but we're as integral as, as anybody else, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I, and I think we're natural allies. I mean, it's, you, I think that, uh, you know, it's LGBT. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. We, yeah, we, we, we're fighting the same kind of uh, prejudice isn't the word I'm looking for. It's just sort of like mis like confusion, yeah. uh, resistance. Uh, we're trying to get people to embrace their own sexuality, no, no matter what that is. And that's mm -hmm. how I felt, feel about like being uh, what being a sister has done for me. I started out being pretty male identified. I mm -hmm. was a cis male uh, gay man. But being in um, in makeup and kind of drag um, allowed me to get in touch with the feminine within me. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it wasn't, I'm not trying to, I'm not pretending to be a woman. I'm trying to find the 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 feminine in me and bring that out and make it visible so that's that's my own particular 
Well, it's working for you. I mean, and you can, you can sense that femininity. So, yeah. Thank you. There's something about being able to put on, you know, not hiding, I don't want to say, but putting on your face. Yes. You can bring out things that you don't, maybe right. your regular face is hiding. You can bring right. that to the for, forefront. So it's not as much hiding to me as bringing that out. Right. Um, you, which is you really can cool. disconnect from the the, the 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 ego investment in everyday like presentation, right? And it's yeah. like, okay, it's like it's it's not cast, it's Mary Media. It's yeah. like, you know, like, <laughs> like if she fucks up, then you know uh, that's what off. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so are you are you a trans woman? Me? Wait, yeah. No, I'm I'm a cis male. Oh, okay. I was getting confused there. Okay. Either way is fine. But yeah. <laughs> Listening to me, I, yeah. I, I, I I'm no. not surprised. It doesn't matter really, but uh, yeah, no. Um, but yeah, we. I enjoy the diversity in the community. Um, and I'm I'm with Mick. I don't understand this uh, bias, binary stuff, and anti-trans. It's absolutely not. It's people. Same as me and different as me, and that's been the definition for a long time. And uh, pan people are beautiful too. Um, mm -hmm. And just all this stuff that the infighting can really drag us apart and drag us down. So I think there's a lot of us who are just fighting against the infighting, maybe. Um, yeah. But yeah. So um, I noticed we got some comments going on here. Nutty, uh, she missed her uh, shout out because the mailman came. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's wondering. How many nuns have been around for all 40 years? And how long does the average nun stick around? <laughs> well, let me, okay, I wasn't around for all 40 years. I took a hiatus, like in the mid 80s, and I got, and I got reconnected in uh, maybe about 10 years ago um, in a fairly active way. Uh, so the average, that's a good question. I don't know, I, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I would say, I mean, there are some who have been around all 40 years, and I've been around for maybe 20 of those 40 years. Um, and maybe, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a two year process to join. So by the time, by the time you've invested those two years, you're probably gonna try to make it work for a little while. You know, even if you're starting to have questions. Um, but I would say a lot of the nuns have been, that I see as at the order, have been there maybe six or seven years, but they're, they're going strong. So, and then there's others who are not really so active, but they stay in touch and they put their two cents in every once in a while. Um, they stay interested and they, they feel a connection and, and an affiliation. Um, and they've been around for 20, 30 years. So, um, there aren't we'll that send many. a novice into the archive. Pardon me? We'll send a novice into the archive. They can figure yeah. it out. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, like, we, we, we want statistics here. <laughs> yeah. But that's an interesting question. I think it's a, I think by the time you become a fully professed sister, you know pretty well whether this is for you or not. And it's only perhaps life changes, like having to move to a different city or um, maybe some health issue or whatever that might interfere, might, might take you on a different course in life. Okay. Um, let's uh, see. Uh, Nutty says, ruining it for everyone. I want that on a patch, bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> they were bumper stickers. That's what they were. Yeah, way back. And then Lynette says, given our current socio-political phase, have you seen an increase in tension within our community? And I, I believe she means LGBT community or general community, or you could talk about both. Well, that's an interesting question. Is like, um, the, are we talking about the sort of the a the kind of <laughs> swing to the right? um politically are we talking about the me too uh, movement uh, where women are be are more empowered about um their situation so i'm not sure what the socio-political situation is, that's being referred to is but i do think 
it, I encounter when I'm out doing my sisterly work, I encounter people who are actively engaged, who are, it's, it's, if there's, they're trying to make the world a better place. So I'm not encountering people who are, um, who are fighting the changes, this, the political and this cultural and the social changes that are going on. I mean, I'm mostly encountering people who are taking that further, taking it as far as they can and making, trying to make the world a more inclusive, caring place. So um, I think you'd have to ask a sociologist <laughs> uh, whether, whether there's more tension in the world or in our community. I had somebody in college try to make me a sociologist. She wanted to direct me in that direction. And I know, so I, I was exposed and that would take three hours to answer by a sociologist, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. So they would love and that question. And then it would just though. be statistics, not people, right? Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, that's what drove me away from it. Okay, no, I can't do One this. One of the yeah. interviews I had done for this book, and I used some of the statistics, was from the Human Rights Campaign. And that is specifically what they said, um, was that since the 45 went to the White House, um, that over half of the people are refusing to identify who they truly are out of fear. So mm -hmm. it was a very sobering experience wow. for me. Um, and they gave a lot of statistics. I can't remember them all off my head, but I have some of them in the book. It was very sobering. Um, I think that, like someone like myself who stands on the outside a little bit, I mean, and I don't want to say outside your community, but, you know, seeing it differently. Um, right. My parents are, you know, I'm from Oregon. Nick's mm -hmm. from Idaho. You know how it is up there. You, oh, know, yeah. you know what they're talking about. <laughs> Small town. Um, so my parents, for an example, and I say this lovingly, um, you know, proudly fly a Confederate flag. Um, they are Trump. I was deep in Trump country. And, um, they're from and, Oregon. Right. So but, Portland, people think of Portland. So Portland yeah. is an island, an oasis. Right. Of, oh, Oregon. it's got its own issues. But they're not Southern at all. It is so <laughs> not. Portland, I live I'm in calling Portland, your Portland. parents. Portland. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, Idaho and wow. Oregon, parts yeah. of Oregon, they're almost like an extension of the South. It's yeah. really well, it's weird. Part, it's like an extension it's, it's, of Utah. Yeah. It is. A, it is different. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that too. Yeah, it's it's a different. It's different. And yeah. um, I just went there for my dad's 80th birthday. So and it's and so it's it's that is what it is. Um. Yeah. So being able to see, uh, we are experiencing, and this is a, a swing to the right, and this swing to the right is not just only happening in the United States. It is happening worldwide. And it has been happening for a number of years. And you can go back and really kind of see when this was starting. And uh, we're talking back in the 70s. Um, so you were seeing uh, what happened in Brazil. You were seeing Brexit. You were seeing these things worldwide happening. And it is why, again, I just, these conversations are about human rights and about human rights. Um, mm -hmm. These things mm -hmm. are, are really essential. Um, mm -hmm. So when I, um, I mean, it was funny. It was like, you know, I was going to do something with the Portland sisters and then our timing didn't work out, but it was interesting because I grew up in, in a smaller part of Oregon and I will not be bringing this book there, period. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is it, it's been an interesting thing because um, I haven't, you know, this is like this book and this has been a three year process and has been a, an integral part of my life, but it is a part of my life that I cannot talk to my parents about. Yeah. Um, and that, so it's interesting. So you go to other places and I was just, like I said, my dad's 80th birthday. Um, yeah, you got to be very, very careful. In, mm -hmm. in, um, in, but, but people do think of Portland. In yay Portland, I lived at 39th and Hawthorne. Yay Portland. Portland yeah. is the, the, uh, an oasis. It is a major city. You also have Eugene and you have the, the university. College. Yeah, yeah, college, college towns. Place. That's like Kansas. Um, it's you know, it's Lawrence is a college town. Them in Oregon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, Fortunately, they do have they do have a lot of college young college people, and that's really where it's at. It's another reason I think that it's really important that this book hopefully reaches young people. Young people yeah. will hopefully change the world. Young people are the ones who are getting out there and voting now. Young people are the ones yeah. who are doing the postcard um, challenges, and they're the ones who are really getting active. Um, it was it's really interesting. I have a lot of uh, friends who are DACA, who are Dreamers, um, and that has been yeah, interesting yeah. because when um, I, okay, worst party I ever threw in my life. I love parties, any opportunity to throw a little cocktail party. <laughs> and, and she I, throws great ones. And I yeah. do. Uh, except this was the worst one. And it was when uh, the election happened and, and mm -hmm. Hillary didn't win. And it was the worst party ever of my life. And people were here and they were upset. And 
but I remember I had a lot of young people here and they were very concerned about the DACA, the dreamer mm -hmm. thing. So I, I've stayed in touch with that community. That is a verbal and vocal community that is doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what's happening. So, and we have to do that because it's not just specific to the United States. This is happening worldwide. We are making a, a dramatic shift to the right. Um, so I, I, you know, I think it's essential. So yes, I, I, for one, think that yes, this is, I don't know about tension within your community, but I definitely see tension because there's people like me who are out there going, ha, oh, this isn't right, man. We shouldn't be, you know, having the Muslim ban. I don't care what you want to call it. That's what mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. This is not right. And, and you feel almost a little bit of guilt because although I'm female, I'm still white, you know, mm -hmm. and straight. And I'm, you know, you feel almost like, I don't want to say survivor guilt, but that was a word that you uh -huh. used back then. And you feel it. You feel it. You're like, oh, man, you know, you like know this is wrong. You know that we're doing so many wrong things right now. And it's really, you know, and it's, yeah. And so yeah. I feel that. I see it. Um, but it was sobering, like I said, to do that interview with the Human Rights Campaign and get yeah. those statistics. I was like, what? You know, it's interesting, and I've been reading about this too, is I don't know that the country is as conservative, conservative as it is. Uh, I was reading something about how most people are actually accepting of um, LGBT right. Equality Act. Um, it's just the legislators, which seem to always be about 10 years behind their constituents. They do enough to get themselves elected, and you kind of have to go to an extreme, I think, anymore to be heard, to get elected. And mm -hmm. then you end up, you know, people end up leaving the parties, and you end up with extremists in each party. Um, right right now more so on the right in my humble opinion i am not affiliated with the party myself i'm an, uh, what would what they call in kansas unaffiliated but independent in other places mm -hmm. um and it, but that's what i see my husband left the republicans uh that was a moderate now those moderate voices have all a lot of them have left not all of them um so you're going to see more extremists left over in the party is what he was saying so i'm hoping that we as a people can can still come together on things. Um, about the young people, that was my parenting. I'll take credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> All of them? Yeah. Amy. My husband's too. I'll give Thank you. Yeah. I have a 19-year-old and oh my gosh, my 19-year-old and my a 16 year old and a 14 year old and they are way more knowledgeable about all things political than I could ever right. hope to be even at yeah. my age yeah. um, in fact I have to get them to calm down sometimes <laughs> it's like okay okay too much yeah. but uh, it, it is interesting how the younger kids and um, yeah. Amy says she could e sorry Amy says they could easily see either of their kids being sisters one day oh. and, and, yeah, great. I, I think that is great. And, um, that was, no, so this is what Vish said whenever I was talking to, and I said I had all the young people of color who were coming to these events, these sisters speak. And then Vish said, where's the recruitment flyer? Yeah, that right. sounds like Vish, doesn't it? Yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but because everyone was really, like they were a little surprised. But yeah, and that's what I hope is that we get young people yeah. interested right. in motivating forward. Um, you know, yeah. Youth, well, you know. any, any who are interested, thesisters.org. <laughs> thesisters.org. The all right. Thesisters.org. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we'll put some links up if you all want to send them to us. Uh, I'm going to post this, the recording of this, so anybody who missed it can see it. This yeah. is our first, second big live event. I think um, I remember seeing one before with Lynette at Comic Con, and I believe no. it's done other ones. But uh, so anyway. This is, but I'm going to go ahead and, and post this on, on our bycast page. So send me links and okay. yeah, and we'll work it from there. Uh, let's see some of these other comments. Mick, you can read some too. Go yeah, forward. I got one from a while back. Uh, Melody said that she met some of the sisters in San Antonio and that uh, it's such a wonderful group of people. Great. Those, yeah, I think those, those, those uh, Texas sisters know how to party. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of have to, to deal with living in Texas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blanche Davidian is in Texas. Yeah. They, and they do, I mean, uh, it's no, not just party. Yeah. They do great work. I mean, they do for the community. Yeah. You know? yeah. But, uh, Nick lived in Texas for a while. Have a good time. Well, no, correction. I didn't live in Texas. I lived in Austin. There's a whole. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but did you live in the Austin of the 90s? That's the, no, that's unfortunately, we, I just moved from there. Uh, we just moved a couple of years ago. So it's, unfortunately, it was kind of in the decline. That was one of the reasons we decided to get out. Yeah, it's still a cool place. Know? My heart will always be in Austin, but it's, it's not like it was. 
<laughs> well, I remember early anti-war demonstrations um, in San Francisco when I first moved here, and it was like, U.S. out of San Francisco. <laughs> 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 That's very Texas of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's funny. Yeah. I, same thing with Seattle when I was living there. Um, it was, a, it was definitely a different vibe than it is now. There's, there's, a, I think everything's changed so much and I guess it happens with time, but you always pine for the way it was, you know, so. Yeah. Back in the good old days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think so. I want to thank you so much for your time and your energy. Thank you yeah. for hosting us today. We appreciate it a lot. I speak for you too. Yes, um, absolutely. We really, really appreciate, uh, really appreciate you. Getting and to know you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, this was fun and we'll have to yeah. do this more often. I think there's one question that we haven't really asked. At least I don't okay. remember it. It's kind yeah, of an okay. important question. When's the book coming out? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that is a question I meant to ask. Sorry. Um, April 19th. And um, right. yeah, so I'm excited about that. And um, mark your calendars, folks. April 19th. Yeah, April 19th. Yeah. Good Friday. Oh, it? yeah. It's going to be a great Friday. Because, yes, right. <laughs> great for me. Because <laughs> our, our Easter celebration, right. our, our anniversary is on the 21st at Dolores Park in San Francisco. Anybody who's watching? Here we'll have our hunky Jesus contest and our foxy, foxy Mary. Mary contest and saucy Mary. Foxy. Foxy, foxy Mary. Mary. Hey, yeah. uh, what was I gonna ask? We gotta give away this book. Oh, wow. oh, we do. So let me just give a qualifier. The book is actually not gonna be out till the 19th. So that is when I will send it. I will mail the book on Friday the 19th. That is when it will be sent. Okay. <laughs> Cause it's actually being printed right now. <laughs> So yeah, so with hot cross buns, <coughs> crumbs, and <laughs> in the packaging. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe I'll take it to the book right. and see if can sign it. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Should we have it signed by some sisters? That would be cool. Not. All right. That's so how do you want to do yeah, this? <clears throat> Um, I don't know. I thought you were just like draw a question, <laughs> like draw one of the winners, the lucky winners from the questions, or oh, let's see. However you want to do it, I'm fine. Let's see, Melody asked, "Where can we get this book?" Book. Well, Melody, and I think Melody go. really needs a book. So let's let's give Melody a book. Thank yeah. you. What do you, you think? You can get it from your post box. Yeah, <laughs> your post box. I'll send it. You can be able to get it from your post box. Yes, that is a good question, though. So this will that be available on Amazon. So yes, it will be. So yeah. let me tell, I'm going to give another qualifier. Um, two things. One, on Amazon, you can you will be able to purchase the hard copy, which is going to be the coffee table book. There will also be an ebook. The ebook is going to be different than the coffee table book. It's it, the um, ebooks don't handle the level of imagery that we have yeah. in a coffee table book. They just don't. Yeah. So it'll literally be one photo and of each sister, and then the text their stories so the text will be the same but the layout will be dramatically different um the coffee table book is full color it's eight and a half by eleven it's gorgeous it's hardback it's amazing um so but it, the it's a global format it doesn't work on um it just doesn't work in an ebook so there's that um also starting tomorrow and i'm very happy about this um so i'm an independently produced in other words i raised all of the money to do this myself and mm -hmm. i uh have a campaign page and I raised money to do this. Um, so uh, the book is available obviously online. It'll be at Amazon and Barnes and Noble, all the local, like all the on your online retailers um, because I have Ingram Spark as my distributor. But tomorrow um, we're starting to pitch to, um, I have a book buyer who's going to be pitching it to independent bookstores. So the first one that I've already picked it up is the um, Oakland, the California Oakland Museum. So I'm very excited about Yay. that. They picked it up. Um, and I have several stores who are picking it up, uh, uh, independent bookstores. And I'm going to be listing those all on my website and giving them shout, shout outs of love. Um, when you're doing it independently, it's a different process than doing it through a traditional publisher. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but I expect that a lot of independent stores will be picking this up across the country. And my site is very easy. It's heatherjacks.com. And I will be updating it. So right now I just have the Oakland Museum of Art, but I expect many more. <laughs> I'm going to be putting your link up there too on the and, website. So and of course, yeah, and you'll be able to order it from Amazon or from my website. Um, and then additionally, I do think that we should just have Melody's book signed. If Melody will will confer on that, but I think we should have some sisters sign it. Is she okay with that? We'll make sure she's cool with that. Melody, are you still there? I hope you want your book signed because it's going to be signed. <laughs> like a yearbook. Yeah, like a yearbook. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll make it yeah. more fun. Yeah, so we'll do that. 
Okay, I'm going to notify her. Yeah. Now. And if she does it, that's fine too. <laughs> I don't know what, if she's. I don't see where there'd be a problem with that. Yeah, people are typically like that. Um, yeah. My previous book was about busking in New York City, and it was weird to me, and because I, I had never done, and it won some awards, I had never done that. And people were getting this book, and then going around and having the buskers sign their page. It was like a yearbook. I was like, wow, that's really cool. cool. So, yeah. Yay. <laughs> so I was like, that's a good idea. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm telling Melody now. You won an autographed copy of Sister Stories. We just need your address. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, yeah, and I'll send it to her. Um, yes. we'll send it, and we'll do that on the nineteenth. So. Okay. Yeah, All right. We'll send it to. It's been too long. Time. It's been too long. <laughs> yeah, I, and you know, both of you, um, Heather, I think I have yeah. pictures of you, but I would love a picture for like a headshot. Yeah. Um, oh, I have, both of I, have, I have a lovely photo of her. I have beautiful photos yeah. of her. I do. Oh, good. Send me yeah. both. Yeah. Yeah. Put them up online. Yeah, and I'll they, just, okay. You know. Yes. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I have those too, but I won't use that. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Are there any other, Mick, you've been able to look better than I have. Uh, any other questions we have not answered yet? Um. Well, that's what I'm looking at right now. And I think... Um, let's see. Here. There it is. Amy says, think, Go ahead. Their kids aren't tiny. They're teens and both part of the LGBTQ community, which is awesome, too. Yeah. So, one of the things I learned, and I know that this is going to be like so second nature to you, um, LGBTQA, I thought it was ally. I really no. wanted to be <laughs> ally. And it isn't, which you know, but I learned. And um, but I would like to have a, a added to it because I think I want to be an ally. Okay, <laughs> well, you can yeah. be an ally, but if you are an ally, you don't really need to, you, you know. I want my letter. Yeah, I want I have a letter. letter. I mean, a scarlet ally. letter. Affirm your presence. Yeah, my letter. Yeah. we love you, but I mean, it's 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 uh, I mean. If you're now, I know, you know. I know that sounds silly, but I was not the only person who thought that. No, you're so, not. And no, some, no, people, no. Some, people, some people put LGBTQIAA. Um, so no. you get, every now and again, you get a letter, but you don't need a letter. If you're a true ally, you're like happy to just be. Yeah, that's true. It's called doing the right thing anyway. You know. But I, I opened my book saying that, oh, by the way, A yeah. does not mean ally, by yeah. the way. Yeah, and it, it means asexual. I actually have a daughter who's who's most likely ace. Um, she's on and off says she is, but uh, it just yeah. depends on it. I don't know. She's trying to navigate the world, and then I have another daughter that's bisexual and, and out about that. So, um, but yeah. We're all trying to navigate the world. It, she is. It's yeah. just, you know, she's at that age where it's just all, you're, you're an adult now, and it's all coming at you, and you just don't know what to do with any of it. And I... I don't envy her, but it's fun watching her. It's neat watching her grow into herself. It's a, a neat process. And I'm just here to enable it as much as I can and give her the space. Fabulous. Yeah. So. With it, more parents were. Yeah. I, I think it's coming around. Like I said, I mean, there's a lot of people that accept things, but, you know, it's not re reflected in our legislature or even in our media culture. Um, the media wants to tell us that everybody hates this and everybody loves, you know, they want to tell us what to think. And when you ask people person to person, the, you know, it's, the result is different, definitely. So I'm hopeful and, you know, cause I've got kids. <laughs> and, uh, My son is 30 actually. And oh, he's wow. a rock star. He's amazing. <laughs> and he really, really, yeah, he's super dialed, and um, so yeah, it it does instill me with faith. He is really active. Yeah. Uh, he lives in Medford, Oregon, which is essentially the armpit of Oregon. Yeah. I will say that with so yeah. loudly. I was born there from somebody um, from Oregon. Yeah, he was <laughs> he's born there. Is Oregon? <laughs> he and he works on. He's super. He, the environment is like his calling, and he works and he has for several years now selling solar power in Medford, Oregon, which is hilarious. It's just so. But he's done tremendous with it. Um works for REI and he also does blue sky and um, mm -hmm. he's also on a mayoral. Um, they just voted in a very conservative Republican there. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like, but mom, and he's on this mayoral committee. We're going to go and talk to him. And he's like, but you know, mom, I just really think that 
the reason she thinks that way, she just doesn't have all the information. And I'm yeah. sure that we can yeah. speak. So he's very, you know, I love this level right. at 30 that he still has this level of yeah. idealism and naivety. Right. I'm like, yes, that's what he is. And once she understands, I'm sure she'll change her mind. I'm like, go, son, go. Yeah. yeah. You're the hero. <laughs> Maybe, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to rain on his parade. Yeah. Do it. Like, you know, it only takes one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any anything else in there, Mick, that you see? Um, I see that um, Lynette said that she's a. Uh, I'm in Portsmouth bachelorhood. What does that mean? What? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it was something you said about uh, where you lived. I think she knows what that means. I, I don't know. What yeah. That means. Yeah. Portland, Oregon. Might be a part of Portland. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Might be. Um, well, if it was Portland, I'm at 39th in Hawthorne, so you know that means I'm basically a hippie in heels. Sports, <laughs> That's pretty much it. Portsmouth, <laughs> I don't know. Portsmouth. Oh, that <laughs> in Washington. Did we ask you how long a, the average nun sticks around? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, She's still sticking. <laughs> <laughs> You're still stuck. You're sticking, actually. I think about it. Who's <laughs> an average nun? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Nobody um, here, yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, I think, yeah, I think that people, by the time they've gone through the two-year process to become a nun, it, they know pretty much whether, whether they're meant for the order or not. And um, so I think that they stick around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, usually, like, it's a two-year, it's a really grueling process because I did a lot of interviewing and talked to people about their individual processes. So I think I'm... Um, and that's exactly, and there's also the mistress of novices. So the mistress of novices is the one who, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the person who talks to you and kind of figures out, yeah, is this a good fit? You know, why are you doing this? What do you think sisters do? That kind of thing. And they really help be the gatekeeper. I think right. that's, they're the gatekeepers. Like, oh, you know, you're going to be great. Mm, probably not. Probably, mm -hmm. you know, there's another area mm -hmm. that might be a better fit for you. And that's why I say, like, again, I love being a saint. Um, because that's a great fit for me. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, there's a great fit. And so that's the mistress of novices, which was what mm -hmm. Agnes was when I met her originally. Uh -huh. And I just saw her as the gatekeeper uh -huh. because she had so many conversations with people who wanted right. to. And some people, it was a great fit because you really do. So I think honestly, the mistress of novices is probably the one who kind of, I don't want to say weeds them out, I don't know if that's the right term, mm -hmm. but helps give direction so that, because if you're going to make, because you're not going to make a two-year process if it's not what you want to do. Right. You're not going to stick on no, it for two years. Care. No, that's an elephant pregnancy, right? Two yeah, years. Yeah. You're going to be gonna dedicated after two years if you make yeah. it for two years, which is a good thing, I think. I Don't keep hearing mistress time. of novices, and in my brain it starts mistress of novelties, then I have to switch gears. Yeah, yeah. To start. <laughs> you need a yeah. mistress of novelties, too. That would be fun. <laughs> no, it's... It's more rigorous than that. That, I guess. <laughs> uh, that can be pretty rigorous. But the, yeah, the mistress of novices reports. We have a monthly general meeting of the sisters, uh -huh. and she, the mistress, reports on the progress of each, um, each of the novices and the postulants um, to the general meeting every month. So we we really track it, and each of the each each of the novices. Um, has to have a mother, in mm -hmm. other words, somebody who's kind of like their protective figure within the order and their, you know, instructor, and um, several big sisters who are on their team. So they need to come up with a team, they need to fashion a team of people within the order who they feel they they kind of grok with, you know, mm -hmm. they kind of fit. This is, who, I'm who, learning so much about my Catholic education and <laughs> just learning how the process is. I, I assume it's kind of built on right. hearing a lot of the terms built on that and I'm learning so much right. more than I ever. Well, like the Catholic church, it gets more Baroque as time goes on, yes. you know, <laughs> <laughs> more like the, the process, like there was no process to become an, uh, yeah. a sister at the very beginning, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. And now, you know, it's two years. Yeah. It's a good idea. It's a major production. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's usually when people burn out of something is two years. So you know by the end of two years if you're committed or not. That's so. Correct. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, thank you for the work. One uh, comment here from Nutty. I think this was back when we were talking about 
uh, the bi community and you know binary and all that and she says that she goes my response to bisexual is binary is that bipolar isn't binary either it's both ends of the spectrum and everything in between wow i love that that is yeah that's awesome yeah i love spectrums <laughs> yeah yeah me too yeah, and this is yourself you know and that's not, the other. Have it, not, not have it imposed on you from the outside yeah well and but uh yeah. There's so many different variations of bisexual anyway. It is a spectrum. She's right. Nutty's right. It's definitely a spectrum. And mm -hmm. I, I kind of have been fluid over the years of kind of more one way than, than, you know, on one end of the spectrum versus the other and sometimes it all. So, <laughs> you know. Um, do you have, do you find bis, I, I, and forgive my ignorance, but no. I used to live with some lesbians who were, uh, they practice bisexuality mm -hmm. as well, and they got a lot of flack from the women's community mm -hmm. for that. Oh yes, <laughs> has that changed? I mean, is is there is there an acceptance, just uh, an understanding that people's sexuality is their own? And I well, since I've been monogamous, and I have it, uh, I'm in a monogamous marriage, so I'm not very familiar with how it is now. Um, but I I feel like at least now I can speak with lesbians that are friends and have this mutual understanding of okay we can ask each other's que uh, other questions and yes i exist so there's more that acknowledgement of my existence whereas when i was in the 90s and um first came out and was trying to date women uh they just ran the other way and it, i don't uh -huh. think it was my hair but you know it was <laughs> Oh, you know, I, know I, like hair, hippie, I don't know. Shaggy evergreen hippie, but um <laughs> but uh you know it it and they you know I heard things like that doesn't exist, you're just one way or the other. Um and I hear less of it now, but again I'm not at that stage of dating right. anymore. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I do say that I didn't choose to be heterosexual. I chose to be monogamous, but um that doesn't mean I'm not uh bisexual and there is that um i do have to come out uh it's obviously not assumed people assume what you are by your relationship um right but and i i'm not in a heterosexual relationship i'm in a mixed orientation relationship and boy does that make people mad when i say that that still does mm. upset people mm. um it's you know relationships don't have sexualities there's sexuality in relationships but not the other way around mm -hmm. and um so I, I get flack for that um but i, I, I haven't I hadn't heard that before yeah that's that that's was great. a yeah. that was so free to learn that because it would get so frustrated um the, but i think it feels to me from my angle that things are starting to get better um there's still a lot of lesbians who like to don't like us um but they tend to come around once we talk to them but whereas before the door was just completely shut right. like i said no oh, no thank you and running the other way so um mm -hmm. i don't know if that's a function of my age or the society um getting more open and people starting to us becoming more visible which is one reason why i've decided um you know a few years ago to be more out about who i am mm -hmm. um make an active thing like that uh but yeah, does that answer your question? I kind yeah, of tend to go around sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Is that your experience, Mick? I mean, are people like other men, other men more accepting of bisexuality than they once were, or do you feel your do you feel your? I think it's better than what it. I think it's better than what it was. Um, I still like a few years ago because I'm in a relationship now. I'm getting married um, in August. But a few years ago, you know, my friends and I, we go out to the clubs and it's kind of was now it's half and half, or at least it was then where years and years ago, it was just like, oh, you're one of those. Yeah. Now it's yeah. like, okay, you know, either I'm interested or I'm not, or, you know, of course you got the guys like, well, I have the chance to get lucky, so I don't care one way or the other. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I think it is getting better, but I still think there's a lot of work to do. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Like with heterosexuals, it seems to be getting 
better. And I think that's a function of them knowing about it more. Whereas before when yeah. I had to come out to my husband as, as bisexual, he thought I was gay and, you know, I was getting nowhere flirting with the guy. So I finally just asked him. And, and one thing he said to me was on like our third day, he goes, look, it's going to take me a bit. I'm an Okie. I didn't have never heard of this stuff before moving to Seattle. And that's where I met him was in Seattle. And, <laughs> he, that, but he was honest, but he really hadn't. I mean, it's even in Kansas, I'm living in Kansas now, and it's just still L, B, and T. People understand those things. They don't, it's hard to under, for people's brain to wrap themselves around middle ground on anything. Uh-huh. Um, it's, we all want to think in black and white, and that's just not how the world works. Right. So we exist, yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. progress <laughs> yes very slow but it's getting there um i was happy to find there was a bi flag when i came out again i'm like what when that when that here because it was before yeah. it didn't exist when i first came out so it's like cool so we have a culture and we're things are getting stronger and i think things are improving for us hopefully we're still at the bottom of a lot of health list uh, mental health and physical health um we're at the bottom uh, so that's our effort now is, and we just had by health month is to educate bisexual people about taking care of themselves, but also the people around us on how to deal with us and take care of us and and treat us. So we're not so internalized and with this stigma. So Uh anyway. Yeah. Well, thank you. says when she was dating, it was uh, hard because lesbians wouldn't date her. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, because she was bi, so they, you know, and I think that's kind of, I think of, it's kind of universal. Everyone experiences that at least once. Oh, yeah, several times. And and then they wonder why we end up with men. Well, yeah. you guys wouldn't date right. us. Yeah, we right. tried. Right. <laughs> the hot lesbian that I worked at the pizza place with, I tried, okay? So <laughs> I tried. I made the effort. So anyway, yeah, just just out there if you're still up there in Seattle. <laughs> and bring some pizza. <laughs> yeah, bring the pizza. It was good pizza. It was a horrible place to work, but it was great pizza. <laughs> yes, Melody, I'm with you. What else, Mick? Anything else? Or yeah, Amy said. Uh, yeah, Amy just said she was. I got asked if I'm just uh, really just gay. Quote. And I had one butt at, butthead ask me if my spouse found it hot. Oh, well. Yeah, I have people feel sorry for my spouse, like I'm cheating on him or I'm doing something horrible by identifying as bisexual. Like that's meaning uh-huh. I'm going to walk out on him at some point. Like, no, right. that's I, so I what I do is I say, well, no, we just fight over Wonder Woman. You know, who gets Wonder Woman? <laughs> Wonder Woman. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm going to win that anyway. <laughs> And this has nothing to do with anything. I'll just say really quickly. I've actually never been married, and I'm over 50, uh-huh. and I will probably never get married. Because really, um, and, and I just don't, I just apparently don't believe in institutions after that whole fundamentalist thing, you know. Uh-huh. But, um, but really and truly, if you really think about it, when you're with someone, I mean, I think that you just choose to be with them. Mm-hmm. And isn't that just simpler? Because, I mean, like, you know, you know, I have, I with games, you know, and I'm, mm-hmm. but yeah, you just choose that every day, don't you? That's not who you want to be with anyway. Uh-huh. Everyone just wants to choose to be with you. And then the day they don't, well, that's, that's your loss because I'm really hot. But right. from that. Right. But yeah, at mar- the, the <laughs> idea of marriage and, and, and that whole monogamy thing, that's just never really been something I've really bought into. I was raised on Indian land, so yeah. I was a little skewed from the onset, let's just put it that way. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, those things don't, they've never really made sense to me. They're not the natural way humans work. And I'm going to say that I, I did well, study are. some anthropology in college and feminist theory and now that, um, but if we want to talk about humans and in, in their physical selves, it's not normal. It's not the norm to be monogamous. It's a choice to be monogamous. So that's yeah, why I say yeah. I chose that. And I chose marriage, but I, I don't know that I chose my husband as much as he fell into my lap or I tried <laughs> calling him his. Um, you know, it, we oh, just man, connected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they will, you know, I mean, you connect with somebody. I, I think yeah. for me, I connect with, I sure, there's some great things about each gender physically that are awesome. I'm not going to say that, but um, 
but uh, and I know that there are people who connect with people only on the personal personality level or the spiritual level or uh, yeah. who the person is, um, but not their genitals. But hey, I like genitals. Um, <laughs> sorry, um, but, uh, but I don't know. I connect with the first person who was there, and that I connected with the most at the time when it, it just timing and and his personality had a lot to do with it yeah yeah i just i think yeah. that and and speaking and speaking from a, a rather sheltered and ignorant point of view from a, it's just it's really limiting and that's the thing i just mm -hmm. you know we've got to be more creative you're the one who said that to me we can be more creative than that can't yeah. you <laughs> said that to me and i think i put it in the book mm -hmm. when i was like yeah, okay, this is yeah. <laughs> that's creative. So, and it's just yeah but I have had a magnificent morning. Yeah. Yes, I know. We all, I know Mick's got to get to work here. Um, okay. and, yeah, eventually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, I've got to go I, the kids. I'm the mistress of grants, and so we have, uh, we just had our grant cycle. Know, so I have correspondence. I have to, a lot of correspondence I have to attend to. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to hit you up some, some year. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to all yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should. We'll open, we'll, well, we just closed our Easter cycle. Mm -hmm. We'll open grant uh, applications again at thesisters.org um, yeah. in uh, probably in sometime in September. Good to know. Good to know. It's all right. Great. I'm going to remember grants that. Grants are fantastic. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I love what I love. What, I love it. That's why, I, that's why I work behind the scenes. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, and as a matter of fact, so, just off the topic, twenty percent, and you know this, of course, um, twenty percent of all of the uh, book sales, net, net book sales, and net um, art, cards, all that stuff that you can find on our Indiegogo page actually are, is donated to the grants uh, right. for the sisters. Wonderful. So, yeah. And it I've had a, I've had a great time too, Mick. Oh yeah. Okay. This yeah is fun. Awesome. All right. Yeah. And we we cleaned up Thank for this. So much. Yeah. <laughs> I put my good, I good shirt on. Yeah. With a sister. <laughs> I know. Um, anyway, I'll, let's go ahead and close. Um, that's it for our Facebook special live event. Hopefully, we'll do more of these. Um, I had a lot of fun. Um, thanks it's again wonderful. to yeah. yes. Thanks again to both of you for being you on here. Facebook. Yes. 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 Okay. And uh, have a great April Fools, everybody. And remember that you are not wrong, you are not broken, and you are not alone. You are bisexual, you have community, and we love you. Oh, bye. Love you. Okay. We love you. Bye. 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 bye.